Hello everybody and uh, welcome to another video demonstration of Castle Story. So today we're going to cover a few gameplay mechanics we've been working on, uh, namely the waypoint beacon system and uh, what we call the radial menu. So to start off I'm gonna load the good old prototype island and uh, I'll explain uh, how it works. So, a few months ago we released a prototype version of the game to a small group of people uh, so we could get some actual feedback on the uh, core gameplay mechanics. And uh, the feedback we got was pretty interesting. There seemed to be a uh, consensus that some core gameplay mechanics needed to be uh, reworked. Uh, so we had to go back to the drawing board. Uh, basically, people seem to be uh, complaining about the fact that uh, you could not uh, give direct actions to the characters. Uh, you could only put them into groups and give them uh, general directions. So whenever a problem appeared, uh, there was nothing you could do about it. Secondly, uh, there was a few problems with the user interface. Basically, people were getting lost in, uh, in sub-menus uh, with dozens of buttons. And uh, also, they, if they wanted to actually accomplish a certain task, they didn't know what button they had to press. So uh, there was a general, general lack of, of context in, in the, the menus between the, the 3D world and the 2D uh, interface. So here's the solution we came up with. We call it the radial menu or pie menu because it's shaped like a pie chart. Uh, now, d before doing anything else, let me activate this uh, nifty screencasting tool so you can see what I'm doing on screen. You can open the pie menu by holding right click. You can then move around to highlight different options. Releasing your mouse button selects the highlighted option. In this case, I open the pie menu on open ground with nothing selected. It gives me the task creation menu that I can use to create different task groups, like this mine for example, that I can then just drag around uh, like it used to be. But the pie menu also takes into account your current selection. For example, if I select this Bricktron and then click on open ground, I get different options that are more useful in this context. I could ask Dingo to move or dig a specific voxel and he'll do so. So you can see that the pie menu changes according to what I have selected and what I click on. With uh, Dingo selected, I can right click on the task group, assign him to the group and he will start mining. But uh, with no one selected, opening the pie menu on the task group will give me options related to the task group itself. In this case, I can make everyone stop working, remove them from the group or even delete the task entirely. The pie menu also has the advantage of being very fast and intuitive. By uh, mapping certain actions to direction that makes sense, the player can easily remember the position of certain buttons and activate them quickly. In this case, I can ask this Bertron to pick up this log by swiping upwards, and then ask him to put down the log by swiping downwards. I can then repeat these actions quickly and easily because the buttons have been mapped to directions that are logically linked to their action. So in conclusion, we believe that the pie menu is a great way to interact with the world. It changes with the context, lets you interact directly with the environment instead of going back and forth with the 2D interface, and has a lot of flexibility, allowing for some emergent behavior to occur. For example, I can ask this brick drawn right here to grab the block from this stockpile, and then simply throw it off the island. Pew! Just like that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. We will be updating the prototype with this feature as soon as possible, so stay tuned for more updates. Uh, see you next time, and thanks for watching.